Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning, and we are so glad you're here with us. I want to thank Pastor Patience for being here with me this morning, as well as Blake Hoppus. And as you can see, we're recording in the sanctuary, so we invite you to choose your favorite pew and join us as we worship. Please be sure to check out your bulletins for all the announcements and details about all of the upcoming events and things we're doing here at Union. Today we'll have a virtual coffee hour from 11.30 to 12 after worship, so check your weekly emails or contact one of the pastors or call the church office to get the login or call-in information. And these will happen every Sunday through November 15th. Starting today, we will be online for worship for the month of November and December, but be on a watch for a postcard that's coming out um, That'll be giving you some dates for a Grove Worship and Tailgate Lunch on November 22nd, as well as a Sanctuary Open House on November 29th. Today at 11.30 in the Grove, we are celebrating the baptism of Hayden Lee Christman. So many blessings to Hayden and her parents, Larissa and Sheldon. Today we also celebrate All Saints Sunday, where we will name all of those saints in our congregation who have passed since last November, and our thoughts and prayers continue to be with their families. I invite you to join me in our greeting that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Please join in our first hymn. Please join me in the call to worship. Ordinary saints offering simple gifts, a word of counsel in our need, an embrace when the clouds hover near, a listening ear for long-buried memories, saints in our midst, 
shedding light on our path, sprinkling hope through our days, seeding joy in our hearts. Praise God for saints beyond time. Praise God for saints who walk beside us. The poem, This Clay Jug by Kabir. Inside this clay jug, there are canyons and pine mountains and the maker of canyons and pine mountains. All seven oceans are inside and hundreds of millions of stars. The acid that tests gold is there and the one who judges jewels and the music from the strings no one touches and the source of all water. If you want the truth, I will tell you the truth. Friend, listen, the God whom I love is inside. Please join me in the prayer of transformation. Skilled potter God, I am your living clay. I am your soft, unformed, and being-shaped mass of earth. Put me in fire, skilled potter God. Put me in your own bright fire. I am warm, warm as you from fire. Soft and hard, shaped and purposeful, I am so warm from fire. I am a small thump of clay Here in this large and lovely earth And yet before I knew my name You knew my form, you knew my worth And long I resisted my shape Long I insisted on my own plan now I am softening my way And going back to the potter's hands This morning we hear the fifth monologue from Reverend Glenna T. Shepherd. I was with her when the priest came to call. He had a vision and he needed her expertise, the beauty that she continuously created. The potter's friend and the baker in the village had lovingly baked communion bread for the parish for the past 40 years. She died last Tuesday and all in the village were heartbroken. The priest wanted a way to pour the love and comfort of God over everyone to soothe their grief. Would she make a jar to hold the oil that would anoint the heads of her friends? I expected her to just say yes, to seize this opportunity to comfort those who mourn together, but she didn't. She just looked at him and wept. Silently, the tears flowing freely, she went to her wheel, centered the clay, and with her own tears mingling with the softening, softening lump of clay, she began. I am a small thump of clay Here in this large and lovely earth And yet before I knew my name you knew my form, you knew my worth And long I resisted my shape Long I insisted on my own plans Now I am softening my way And going back to the potter's hand This morning's scripture comes from Jeremiah chapter 8, starting with verse 18. My joy is gone, my grief is upon me, my heart is sick. 
Hark the cry of my poor people from afar and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their images and their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my people, my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn, and dismay has taken a hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, so that I might weep day and night for the slain of my poor people. Here ends this morning's scripture lesson. May God bless those who have heard it. Amen. I've learned something recently that sometimes in order to deal with something, you have to name it. You can't just push it down, but rather you need to call it out. And once you do that, you are most likely able to handle that problem. So today, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call out something that I think a vast majority of us are going through. I'm going to call out what I think is eating away at so many of us, and I'm going to start combating it head on. Grief, I am calling you out. I'm calling you out because that's the biggest thing I feel around me. I'm calling you out because that's the biggest thing that weighs on me. And that's the one thing that I do not like to name or confront because then it becomes real. And then I have to deal with it. Grief, I am calling you out. I am calling you out because this year has been trash. I'm calling you out because there are so many things that we have missed out on. We've missed out on graduations and proms and family gatherings. We missed out on church gatherings and Easter. And we have missed out on so much of life. And so we grieve. We grieve in silence and we grieve in darkness and we grieve over and over and over again. And it feels as though this grieving that we are going through is never going to end. And just when we get that, that glimmer, that feeling that we are back to normal, we enter into the cycle of grief all over again. So what are we supposed to do? What is God calling us to do in these times of grief? What is God calling us to do when all we want to know is when this grieving will be over? When all we want is good news and we want happy things and just want to be out of this funk that we are in? I would love to tell you that there is some magic potion or special code that would miraculously get you out of whatever place of grief that you're in. But if I told you that, then I would be lying to you and I would be lying to myself. Unfortunately for us as humans, there's no quick fix on hard times. Life just doesn't work that way. No matter how much we wish it did, it just doesn't. Grief comes to us completely out of nowhere and is so much more prominent when there are difficult things going on around us. It's just part of life and it's part of life that is here to stay. So then what are we to do? What are we to do when the overwhelming grief completely consumes us? 
Well, God invites us into our grief. God invites us into a fountain of tears. We are encouraged and invited to cry. We're, we are encouraged and invited to cry for things that weigh heavy on our hearts, to cry for our neighbors, to cry for our nation, to cry for every living soul and all of the saints that have gone before us. We are invited to pour out our emotions. Through these fountains that are our souls, we are invited to begin to heal. We're invited to heal ourselves and to heal others. And I know that's crazy, because fun fact, we are allowed to heal. Somewhere along the way, we have become a, this super weird society that realized that we probably shouldn't ever cry or give in to our grief. That when we're grieving, we need to do so in silence. Or when we're crying, we shouldn't do so publicly. But that's ridiculous. We, as humans, need to be able to heal ourselves. We need to be able to heal ourselves to begin healing those around us. And when we pass the healing on, it continues like a river flows. Everyone touched by a healing presence even when they don't think they needed it. This is a healing that we didn't know we needed. God is constantly encouraging us to do what's best, not only for others, but for ourselves too. Part of being these vessels that God has created us as is to become fountains. To become found, becoming a fountain means that we need to call out and face our grief. And when we do that, we are able to heal. That is what we need to do now more than ever. We need to heal. We need to heal ourselves and we need to heal others. And that work is not easy. And those feelings that you will feel will absolutely be raw. But when those floodgates open, don't close them. Don't hold back the fountain of tears. Allow that fountain to pour out and allow the healing that will come for it to fill your soul. Allow for God's presence to be with you. Allow it to happen. Just allow it. Amen. Today we remember and give thanks for those church members who have passed away this year and for those whom our pastor, pastors presided over the funerals. We will name them for you. Janet Bachman, Jean Barone, Eunice Deal, Charles Fink, Curtis France, Richard Gemmel, Carl Heinzelman, Raymond Hoffman, Charles Horwitz, Norman Hunsicker, George M. Kern, Warren Coons, Shirley McFarland, Betty McGee, Sandra McCochi, Ruth Miller, Hilda Noggle, Mervyn Peters, Dolores Rader, Rhonda Santilli, Tricia Scripture, Marion Snyder, Lorraine Van Norman, Alice May Kuiper Weiss. We invite you to take a moment of silence to remember others in our lives who have passed this year, as well as those who have passed other years who we still mourn and celebrate. And we pause to give thanks for those individuals and families
that had given funds in order to remember their loved ones and support the mission and ministry of God's church here at Union UCC. You will all continue to be in our thoughts and prayers as you journey through grief and mourning and love. Let us be in a time of prayer. Potter God, we are looking for ways to be remade, remolded, and resealed. Our burdens have become heavy and our grief is real. Whether it be for things we've lost out on or things we are missing in the future, the grief in our lives is present. Help us to relief, release, release our grief, to find ways to make it manageable, and help us, most importantly, to begin to heal. Today, we ask for your healing touch not only on our souls, but on those who are ill, those who struggle in the face of medical issues, cancers, testing, therapies, addictions. You name it, O oh God, and your children are facing it. Ease our anxieties around all of the things that surround us. Injustices, equalities, politics, policies, unrest. Hold us in our grief, and yet, O oh Holy One, through all the mess that surround us, we have celebration. We have joys, and we ask for your blessings on those joys in our lives. We ask that you be with those on our hearts and those who are listed in our prayers. We pray for Marilyn and Bertha, for Jake and Katie, for Jack, Janet, and Gail, for a friend and her daughter, for June, Larry, Floyd, and Jim, for Chester and Pastor Gogetz, for Dennis and Denise, a mother and a sister, for Larry and Chris. We pray for Kathy and all children who face abuse, for Jen and our students and educators and school staffs, for Nancy, Jack, Jeff, Fran, Marilyn, Richard, for Richard and Lisa, Catherine, Anne, Patty and her children, Sharon and her family, and Judy's family and friends. Today, loving, loving Creator, we thank you for all those who have come before us, leaving a legacy of faith. Thank you for the countless ways they modeled for us what it means to love you and love one another. We are grateful for the sacrifices they made and the gifts they shared and the time they gave so that your gospel might be proclaimed from this place and among these people. We pray for the families of all of our saints, and those who have gone before. May their lights shine brightly in the world. Hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
At this time in worship, we would be collecting our offerings, and we are so thankful and blessed for all of you who have continued to support the mission and ministry here at Union UCC. If you are able, we are still collecting food and toiletry items, which can be donated on Saturdays and Sundays. On the, uh, the left side of the church, there are boxes labeled. Please see your bulletin for more information on that. And we give thanks for the children's choir and their musical offering today. May the God of the living and the dead, of doubt and hope, of laughter and love, of family and friends, bless you and all those you love, wherever they may be. As you go forth from this place, we commend you to the love, grace, and peace of God, which surpasses all understanding and which is with you from now to the end of time. Amen.